So, um, problem 22 gives us the parent function x squared, f of x equals x squared, and then we're going to transform it into uh, 3 times x plus 4 squared plus 2. Um, so the first part is what kinds of transformations are we doing? So this one has three things on it. Inside, right, it has a plus 4. Remember, this is a horizontal translation, and it will go the opposite way. So this is going to shift to the left 4. So shift the graph 4 units to the left. I want that one. Right? Um, my 3 outside is a vertical and this one will be a stretch. If it was a fraction, it would be a compression. So this will be a vertical stretch, the factor of three. And this last piece is a vertical movement, and it does whatever is there. So it is going to go up two. So shifts the graph up two. So those should be my things that change. And they want us to graph this. So you have a few ways that you can go. I don't think it said graph x squared. Just graph this one. All right. So I'm going to show you a couple of approaches. Um, you're going to need the points to do the graph. Let me try. So... You're going to need points to do the graph, and your tool requires you to first pick the one that will be the vertex, right? Um, I'm going to do it from the calculator, and I'm also going to show you by tables uh, how to do it. So you can do it either way that you prefer. Um, to make sure that you get this vertex, that's going to be the point that will make this piece here this x plus 4 that will make it 0. So we're going to need a negative 4 for the x. Right. First of all, I'm going to pull it, pull it on the calculator. Um, I had it right at the edge. Don't see why. Sorry, I had the calculator right at the edge. All right. Scoot it over a little. Let's see if I can find it. Good. All right. I'll go this way. All right, so on the calculator, I'm going to go under y equals. And if you don't have a graphing calculator, uh, try out desmos.com. It does the graph nice. Um, to get a table of coordinates is not so nice, but you might be able to, or I don't know how to do it. Okay, I haven't played with it enough to do it, but it does give you a nice graph. So, and I will allow that tool um, on your test. I've always put that one in. So I'm going to type this in. 3 and parentheses x plus 4 close parentheses to the second plus 2. And I'm going to say graph. And this is a parabola. So this is what my end graph should look like. But you have to be able to get your points on there. So for that, I'm going to use second table so it's above the graph. And these seem really big, but what I have to know to be able, and it's because of this tool is why you need to know this, right? Because it only takes two points to make that. And so we want to look at our 
um, piece and whatever would make this zero. So we want x to be negative 4. So in my table, I need to go up some to negative 4. That's the point I want to choose first. So negative 4, 2, and I can choose any other point. So negative 3, 5. That will be enough for me to draw this graph um, because of the tool. So I can do that. Um, I was also going to show you how to do it by hand. Let's put it on there. And so we'll click the tool. We're going to do negative 4, 2. We're going to do negative 3, 5. And you can keep your calculator out if you did it on your calculator. So that looks right to what we had. And we can check. And hopefully it won't take it away. So we'll submit. All right, so it was happy with that. Now I want to backtrack and just show you how to do this by hand. Um, I would never try to do these movements, especially a stretch. Uh, by hand. So I would work from the table and what you would work from, so if we're doing it by hand, make your original table for f of x equals x squared. So for a parabola, so you want 0, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. That would be enough. So 0 squared, we're doing this for x squared. 0 squared would be 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, negative 1 squared gives you 1, and negative 2 squared gives you 4. All right? Now we'll do the transformations to it. And so uh, you have to work from the inside out, so we have to do this x transformation first. And so we're going to subtract 4, because you always do the opposite, and this is to the x variable. So I'm going to make a new table, and for my x's I'm going to subtract 4. So 0 minus 4 is negative 4, 1 minus 4 is negative 3, 2 minus 4 is negative 2, negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5, and negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. Right, let's see, our next transformation will be out here, this one will always be last, or add or subtract. So this is going to be 3 times the y. I can do it to the same one since it was the other variable. So 3 times my y values. So 3 times 0 is still 0. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times 1 is 3. And 3 times 4 is 12. All right, and we only need one more piece. So we'll do it onto this new table. And it is a plus 2. You do exactly what's there, and that is to the y variable. So your x variable is going to stay the same now on your table. So negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, five, negative 5, and negative 6. And my y's will add 2. So this will be 2, 5, 14, 5, and 14. Right, and so if we were going to do the graph from it, we need the one that matches the vertex here. This would have been the vertex for x squared, so that's what we need first, and that is actually what we used, because we looked in here and said, okay, what will make that zero? Right, and so negative 4, 2, and those are the exact two points we used. So this is just an alternate way by hand. Um, I just would not try to move the points. If you have two things to move, uh, it's possible just to move the points, but um, I think it would be too hard there. Anybody have questions? And it's fine to unmute yourself if you do. Okay, it just starts out muting everybody. And you can also put them in chat. All right, so that was the first one by request.
We'll get a new page. And um, the next one I picked was um, problem 13. It was a piecewise function. That is where we stopped last time. So you're going to put both of these on the same grid and graph the following piecewise function, determine its range, and evaluate f of 4. So I have to remember to evaluate f of 4 at the end. And I usually do these by hand. You can do them in your calculator. I think I showed you some with the test button. Um, it's not as valuable as the transformations in the calculator. All right. So these are both lines. And you know that because the exponents of the x and the y are 1. So I'm going to write some work by hand. So y equals negative 1x plus 2. And this is when x is less than 0. So I'm going to get a little table here, and I'm just going to pick points, and I need to pick zero, right, and put a star by it. This time you'll want to open circle because there's no equals. All right, so if I plug zero in, negative one times zero is zero, so this one gives me two, and you need to pick something else, but you have to pick less than zero. So let's pick negative two. You could have picked anything there less than zero. So negative two, if we plug it in, negative two times negative one will give you a positive two plus two is four. That will give us our first line. Let's go ahead and do the math for the second line. So y equals four x minus three when x is greater than or equal to zero. Again, you can do it with a table. And you need the zero. So we'll put a star there. Um, this time it will be a closed circle because of the equals. So plug zero in. Four times zero is zero. Minus three gives us a negative three. And then we need one more point. So we'll pick something uh, bigger than zero. So let's pick a two. So four times two is eight. Minus 3 will be 5. And before I go to the graph, I'm going to go ahead and do the other thing it told me to do to find f of 4. Just have to make sure you use the right function to plug in. Right? So this is bigger than 0, so you're going to use the second one. So 4 times 4 is 16 minus 3. So this answer will be 13 when we get ready to put it in. All right, let me scroll it back down a little bit. And so I need to choose my open and close circle first. So for the first one, I want an open circle. And I will do 0, 2. So don't go over, but go up 2. Right, and that is an open circle. And then I need to do... You will actually do the ray tool instead of the line tool because it doesn't go forever in both directions. And now I'm going to do, um, I have to click that point again. This is something I always forget. So I'm going to go from there and I'm going to do negative 2, 4. And that gives that piece of the graph. All right, now I'm going to ignore that one and do the other one. This one will get a closed circle, so I need to do that first. And 0, negative 3. So don't go over. Go down 3. And then I will do the ray tool. I'll go back and click this point again. And I will do 2, 5. Right, and so that looks like my graph. 
and it's asking me the range, so lowest to highest, and so you're going to have to remember if this one was open or closed, because uh, it's hard to tell on the picture. So this one was closed, and that is my lowest point, so I will use a bracket for closed. Oops. Shift. So a bracket uh, at negative three. And both of them go up forever. You have to watch on some of these because one will look like it stops, but you have to use both of them when you're doing it. But these actually both go forever up. So this will be our infinity. And that should get in parentheses. And here's the other answer, which we calculated 13. So that is a piecewise function and how to approach it. All right. Uh, next one that I picked out, um, 16, 17, and 18. I picked those. I skipped 15. These are lines and writing the equation of the line. Um, what you need to write the equation of the line is a slope in one point. So you might have to do work to get the slope in one point. And you do need to make sure you know these formulas uh, for finding slope and finding the equation of the line. All right, so they give us one point, four, negative three, and they want us to write the equation in slope intercept form and then rewrite with function notation. To get to function notation, you need slope intercept form. Um, we're going to have to find the slope first. So since they're giving us the equation, we will isolate the y. So I'm going to subtract 4. So I'm just going to keep the negative 5y here. So I'm going to add 7x. To both sides and I'm gonna subtract a 4 and it's fine to just do that if you're okay with it all right so it only leaves 5y on that side so here we have 7x minus 4 and then we're gonna divide across by negative 5 when I work with lines I do them separate pieces just to make life easier sub y equals, this is your slope. You can pull it away from the x, negative 7 fifths, and you could clean that up, but you're not even going to need that piece. All right, so what we needed is this m. So we're going to write the um, formula for finding the equation of the line, which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And we plug in, and this will be x1, y1, our point. So, and you plug into the ones with the subscript. So keep the standard y minus y1. It's minus a negative, so this will be plus. Put my slope, negative 7 fifths. x minus x1, which is 4. Right. You should clear the fraction on this because you have to clean it up and isolate y. So I'm going to multiply across by 5. This one will cancel. So 5y plus 15 equals distribute your negative 7. So negative 7x plus 28. All right, so there's my equation of the line, and now I have to get whatever form they ask for. Um, and actually, the first thing they've asked for is the point slope form, which I could have put this right here. So the y plus 3 and include the fraction, and I'll just show you that that is what goes in here rather than typing. So y plus 3 equals, whoa.
Yeah, Miss H messed up here. Um, I didn't catch that first piece when I read, and it said we want the line that is perpendicular. I am so sorry. I missed that word. So, we can fix it from here. So, perpendicular gives you slopes that are negative reciprocals. So, I found this slope, which is what I needed. So, this work is all okay to here, but my slope is not really this. It's going to be the negative reciprocal. So, opposite sign and flip it over. So, I'm going to make this one red. My slope should have been positive 5 sevenths because of the word perpendicular. If it said parallel, it would have been the same. So, I have to backtrack and All right, and plug in with this slope and this point. So I have y minus a negative 3, so plus 3 equals 5 sevenths times x minus 4. This is the first answer they want um, when they ask you for point slope form. So you don't have to clean anything up. Second one, they ask us for slope intercept form, and that means isolate the y, but we need to get rid of the fractions. So we'll multiply through by 7 to cancel this one. So we have 7y plus 21 equals. Distribute your 5, 5x minus 20, and then isolate your y. So we're going to I'll just go down a little instead of making a new page on that one. Um, subtract 21. So we have 7y equals 5x. Like signs actually add and keep the sign. And then divide by 7. All the way across. So we get y equals 5 sevenths x minus 41 over 7. And that would be this one. Write the equation of the line in slope-intercept form. So slope-intercept form. And I'm just going to show you. All right, good. No surprises there. That's the right answer. Now, the only difference in the next one is you're going to change this y and write h of x, because they said call it h, equals this. That is function notation. And you do have to make sure you pick the right variable here. So h of x, and it's the exact same thing otherwise. Any questions on this? All right. Um, next, I picked 17. I don't want a dummy page. New pages make the notes turn out nicer. And I just picked this one to uh, remind you the um, formula for slope given two points. So you're given two points, so you need to make sure you know this formula. M is equal to change in Y's over change in X's. That's the first thing you'll need. So we have 0, 13, and we have 12, negative 18. I would label x1, y1, x2, y2, and then plug in. So negative 18 minus 13 over 
12 minus 0. Like signs, so they're really going to add. And 32, 31. All right, so that is what I'm getting for slope. Um, and we would use a point. So here's our slope. So this is our M. And here's our point. And then you're going to just plug in and write the equation of the line in these two forms. So um, I'll just set up the first one. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So just make sure you end up with a slope at a point. And watch out if it says parallel or perpendicular. All right, so um, negative 31 over 12, x minus 0, which will just be x. And this will be y minus 13. So this should be our first answer. All right, y minus 13 equals negative 31 over 12, which this does give you just x, which is fine. Um, you. If you use the other point when you set it up, you could have had the second answer. So it would have accepted either one. Right? And then from here, you change to slope intercept form. So get rid of your fraction, isolate your y. So I'm going to skip that piece. I'll just put the answer up here. So I probably can skip 18. Let's see it. Um, yes, we can skip it. The reason I was going to put it on there was because of the parallel part. I missed that the other one had a perpendicular. So I just wanted to remind you about those rules. So this one is parallel. So its slope will be the same as this, and you can pick it right off. So its slope is going to be 9. Um, and you have a point. So we don't need to do that one. You just need to make sure you know those formulas. All right, I did pick 19. So this is a transformation. This one is your absolute value graph. And you probably should go back, you know, at the beginning of 3.4, um, there were those pages with all those graphs, and I said, make sure you know these graphs. So you want to know absolute value, parabola, cube, cube root. Um, so make sure you know those. All right, this one is asking us to give the equation. Uh, I will not give you one with a stretch on it, right? And that was the one we threw out question four. Or if you did it, I'm going to go back and make sure everybody gets an override on that one. All right, so... Um, they want us to tell what this changed graph is. This is it's um, a, a transformation of the absolute value graph, which is always like a V. And it originally looks like this. So this would be our parent function. And so in here we would put um, absolute value. Right. And you should have a button for that um, right here. We'll just put that one in since it's special symbols. And we'll make sure it's right. Good. Okay. So now we want to tell the equation of this other graph they're giving us. But it doesn't have a stretch on it. Okay. So it is flipped upside down. It is flipped vertically. So that is a y movement and it's going to put a negative on the outside so they are calling this g of x so the first thing we have is we have a negative on the outside and that is what's flipped it upside down all right 
it has shifted this vertex piece from here at zero, zero, it shifted three units to the left, horizontal movement, and it's always the opposite. So if it's minus three this way, it's going to be a plus three, and this is inside with the x. And then it's also shifted up. It's not just sitting right here. So it is shifted up one, two, three, four. That is a vertical movement, and it does whatever it says. So this should be our equation. And we'll just look at the answer rather than typing it in. Absolute value of x plus 3. Well, the opposite of it. So we have that. And then plus 4 is outside the absolute. You guys stop me if you have any question, okay? That was 19. And 20 is the one I, um, no, I did, 22 was what I did to begin with. All right, so let's, I picked 21 next, so. And I did because this one just has two things on it. So let's see what we've got for 20. This one is also a square root, but it has a lot more things on it. This is a bunch. So this will be similar to 22 that we did earlier. So, new page here. And we have f of x is our square root function. We're transforming that to g of x is negative 4 times square root of x plus 6 with a plus 8 outside. And we'll first get the things that it's moved before we try to get the graph. All right, so from the inside out, um, remember this is a horizontal shift and it's going to go the opposite way. So it's going to go 6 units to the left six units to the left. You want that one? Um, and then you're going out here. Now when I'm graphing this, I'll do it both at once, but um, it lists them separately. So this is going to be a reflection. It's vertical, so it goes up and down over the x-axis. So it's a reflection over the x-axis. Right? The four will be a vertical stretch because it's outside not horizontal, vertical. And the last piece would be uh, it will move up 8. So those are the four things we should check. see what all they ask us to do. So they're just asking us for one graph. Okay. Um, you do need to make sure that you get the point that matches this end. That goes in first, and then you can have any other point. Um, we can do it by the calculator or with tables, like before. And so let's pull the calculator if I can find it again. Uh, try to keep it on the edge. Let's see. All right, so by the calculator, um, we will have to graph to get that off. Uh, y equals, clear it, right? I'm going to put in negative 4. Uh, square root is here. So second and square root x plus 6, close, plus 8, and 
and have it graph. So this is what my new piece should look like. The negative is what has made it flip over. The four has stretched it. Um, but let's get some points. And we want the point for our first point that would make this piece underneath zero. Um, so if we want the point with a negative six there. So let's look at our table. So second table, right? And even though you see a point here, um, you don't want that one for your first one. You want that one with that negative six to make this piece zero. That will be the end. So I have negative six, that looks like negative six, eight. negative 6, 8, and any other point. So negative 5, 4 will be fine. So those I took from the calculator. And that would be enough to draw the graph. And that's all they've asked you for. So if you're using your calculator and you're good with it, that is all you have to do. Sorry, Ryan, I didn't mean to leave you outside too long. All right. Um, so we could, we would have to plot this one first and then the second one, and that will do our graph. Let's go ahead and do that, and then I'll show you how to do it by tables. So click your tool. We want negative 6, 8. And then we want negative 5. Four. And so that looks good. That looks like our graph. And we'll just submit so that we can make sure I had it right. Okay. Um, and I said I would also do this one by tables. So you want to know how to make your table for the square root, for the standard one. So you're careful what you pick. And underneath here, this has to be greater than or equal to zero. So we can pick zero. We can pick one. Square root of one is one. And we want perfect squares. So I would pick four next and maybe nine. That's as many as you're going to do. So square root of 0 is 0, square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 is 2, and square root of 9 is 3. So this is our parent function. Right. This one, to get here, we are going to work from the inside out. So we are going to have to do this piece first. Remember, you do the opposite, and this is to the x variable. So we're going to do minus 6 from the x's. So negative 6, 1 minus 6 is negative 5, 4 minus 6, negative 2, and 9 minus 6 is 3. Right? Then we will do this piece, your add or subtract here goes last. I can do this in one shot. This is, these are both y movements, so I can multiply the y by negative 4. And that's why I didn't just go ahead and recopy the y. I can do it here, the same place. So negative 4 times 0 is 0. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. And negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. All right, we've done everything except add 8. And that has to go to the y variable. And then we'll be set. So the x is not going to change again. So we'll keep it. So 0 plus 8 is 8. This will give 4, 0, and negative 4. And then with the graphing tool, we only need two points. You need the one that matched up to your end here. 
which is this top one. So this would be the one that's going to match it. And that is what we picked from the calculator. But we had to think about it and know what would make this zero. So we had to do a little work on the side to get the right point to make the tool work right. Because two points really will only determine a line. The reason you can use two here is the programming in the tool. So that's why they make you uh, pick a special one. And then right here is the next point that we used. So you could use those to do it by hand. Um, so either way is fine. Any question there? All right. Uh, next, I picked out some domain questions. Um, there will be at least two domain questions on there, and I shouldn't have done that. I should have gone to my page. All right. Um, so I went to 25. Um, domain questions are actually, they're very standard questions. So you want to make sure to get the domain questions right. So we're going to 25. And you start out with the set of real numbers, and then you have to look for your things to throw away, your restrictions. Denominators can't be zero, and if you have a square root, its radicand has to be greater than or equal to zero. So you set up an inequality. Um, so that's what you look for. Otherwise, it's all real numbers. So this one has two things to look for. So we have a square root, right? The first thing that I'm going to just note is this denominator can't be zero. So z minus three, set it equal to zero, and you're going to throw it away. So it is three. Then we'll work on the radicand, and so 5z plus 20 is going to be greater than or equal to 0. And then you solve the inequality. So subtract 20 from both sides. Divide by 5. So z has to be greater than or equal to negative 4. Now they are going to want you to put it in interval notation. So we're going to start at negative 4 with a bracket because of the equals. We're going to go up to this point that we have to exclude, and we'll close it with a parentheses. We'll do a union. We'll start up again at that same point and go forever to the right. And we'll just check that in the answer box rather than type. So bracket, negative 4 to 3, union, 3 to infinity. So that way we put, we had two things going on there. So that's a good question to see. All right. I did pick 26. It just has a radical. So it has less So your radican has to be greater than or equal to zero. So we'll add seven, divide by three. So X is greater than or equal to seven thirds. I don't have any other restrictions. So we have an equals underneath. So this will be a bracket. We'll start at seven thirds and we're going to infinity. Make sure when you're taking your test that on your paper, you're writing these things. You know, number your problems and make sure you're writing this for me. Um, if I see this and you typed a piece of this wrong, you're going to get some partial credit. So that's important. Um, I'm not just asking for the scrap paper to be a pain um, because I look at it when I review your test. So you want to show me everything that you have there. Um, so you might get some points back if you just put it in wrong. 
All right, and that was 26. So let's see the key and make sure I didn't mess it up. Okay, and I skipped the next one because it's very easy. And 28 is the other kind. It has a denominator that's a quadratic. So you have to factor. So we're still doing domain. Right, so your denominator cannot be zero. So factor it, set it equal to zero, and it will factor. And we'll just throw that not equals in there. Like signs, both plus. Split the x's, you're multiplying to get 14. How about 7 times 2? Because that adds to give 9. Right, and then just set each one equal to zero, except it's going to be not zero. And so this will be negative 7 that we're throwing out, and this will be negative 2 that we're throwing out. So for interval notation, uh, you're going from negative infinity to negative 7 with parentheses. You are going to throw out negative 7, so you'll start again there with parentheses up to negative 2. Union, you'll start again at negative 2 to infinity. And I'm just going to show you the solution. All right, looks like we got it right. Okay. Um, the next one is, the arithmetic I picked out is 31, and it is arithmetic of your functions. And these questions have multiple parts. Whoops, I did pick 29 first. Let's do 29. We want to definitely get in 29 and 31 um, today because those questions have a bunch of parts and I did value those more. I went in and made sure. Um, so the whole thing is not like just one question. It's worth more points. All right. And so this one is doing add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And you have to tell the domain of each one. Right, and I'll put our functions up here. All right, the first one, ask us to add them. You're just going to add like terms. So x squared minus 7x plus x plus 14 and then put your like terms together. So x squared minus 6x plus 14. Um, your domain here is the domain of the intersections of the domains of these. This is all reals, all reals, no exclusions. So the domain is going to be all reals. Negative infinity to positive infinity. And we can check that. Right, x squared minus 6x plus 14, negative infinity to positive infinity. If you are on a computer and you're doing a bunch of this, it's okay to copy and paste on these because your other answers are probably going to be that until you get to D. All right, F minus G, you just have to watch your signs on this one. Subtract the whole second one. So. You have x squared minus 7x minus x plus 14. That parentheses saves you there. And then put your like terms together. So we have x squared minus 8x minus 14. Again, this will be all reals because f was all reals, this one's all reals, the intersection is all reals. So we can look at that answer, x squared minus 8x minus 14, and all reals. Okay, C has us do a multiplication. So F times G.
which because each has two terms, it will be a FOIL. Right, so it will be an x cubed, a plus 14x squared, minus 7x squared, minus, and I need a calculator there, 14 times 7, 98, and it will have an x. These will go together. So have x cubed plus 7x squared minus 98x, and your domain is all reals. And this was c, x cubed plus 7x squared minus 98x, and your domain, all reals. The part d is the one that you have to watch for domain when you're going to write it as a fraction. And I've lost my functions, so let's see. So I have 5x x squared minus 7x, and g of x is x plus 14. All right, so they want us to do f of f divided by g. So F goes on top, G goes underneath, and this is the answer for the division. Um, if you factored an X out, X times X minus 7, it would not divide out, so just leave it as is. This one does have a restriction on the domain um, because of the denominator. So it's all reals except negative 14. So just set that equal to zero and solve. So your domain is going to be um, negative infinity to negative 14 with parentheses and then negative 14 to infinity. So we're good on the division answer. And we are good on the domain. So that is your arithmetic of the functions. And I want to be sure to do 20, um, sorry, 31, which is um, composition of functions. And you have several different um, compositions to do. So whichever one is closest to the X is the one that goes on the inside. So first of all, we are doing F of G of X. So we're going to put G inside of F. So I write down the one it's going to go into, and all of G is going into both places where you have an X, uh, and you will need parentheses because of that square, X plus 8 squared minus 4 times X plus 8. Um, the computer will accept the answer right there, and so that's what I would go with, and this one is not asking us domains. If you did multiply it out, it's okay. It should accept either answer. And that is something that I will watch for when I review. All right. The next one is G of F of X. And so this one is going to put F on the inside of G. Here's our G, so I'll write that first. And in place of the x, it's going to put all of f. So x squared minus 4x, and then plus our 8. And it's done. There was nothing else to do. x squared minus 4x plus 8. All right. I'm going to skip down. I'll come back to C and D, um, where it asks us to do f of g of negative 7. All right. We just figured out f of g 
up here, and we left it in a formula, but we can use that to plug in the negative 7. Otherwise, you can do it into G and then put that number, whatever you get, it'll be a number, into F. So two ways. So I'm going to do part E here. F of G of negative 7. So it would be negative 7 plus 8 squared minus 4 times negative 7 plus 8. So this is 1. 1 squared is 1. All right? And this... You can work inside first because it's numbers, and this is 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. And so this answer is negative 3, and that was E. And let's see about G of F, if I can fit that on here. Because I have the composition on there, right here, I will use that formula. So this is for F. g of f of negative 6, so I'm just here. So negative 6, you want to square, and that negative goes to the power. So this will give us 36 plus 24 plus 8, and you can just grab your calculator real quick. 36 plus 24 plus 8. And it should be 68. Good. Now we'll backtrack and do f of f. All right, so our f of x is x squared minus 4x. So you're going to put it into itself. So I would just write that x squared minus 4x, and you're going to put the whole thing into this one, and you'll use parentheses, and you still want to keep the square minus 4 times this whole thing. I would leave it like that. I would not multiply it out. This is the same. They're just putting a dot in for the multiplication. And you're good there. If you do multiply it, it should be fine. And G of G. This one I think is faster. So our g is x plus 8, and we're putting all of that inside the x, which gives us x plus 16. So this one is a little nicer. It would have taken either answer, so it didn't even multiply that out. All right. Um, so I have three more picked. I don't know if I can get all three. Um, I picked an inverse question. So I picked 33 first and then backtracked to 32. 32 is harder. Right, so... It tells us this f of x is 1 to 1 and therefore invertible. Find f inverse. So this is it. First part is algebraic. And this is a line. You first write y equals 2x minus 10. You switch your x and y. So this becomes x. This becomes y. And then you isolate y. So we're going to have to add 10 and divide by 2. And this is also going to be a line if you want to do it separate or under the whole thing. Um, it doesn't really matter. I'll do it under the whole thing and then we can split it. So y equals, um, this is a half x plus, and then 2 into 10 would go 5. 
it should take either answer in the algebraic part, either this or this. Uh, and then I should write f inverse of x equals this. And they already have the f inverse, so you don't have to write that piece on them. So a half x plus 5. So we're good there. Now they want us to graph, and they want us to put three things on this graph. They want us to put the original, um, and this is a nice form to do it from. And then they want us to put the inverse, and then the identity function. So for the original, and it's a line, you only need two points. You don't need any special points. Um, so you can plug in. This might be a little hard to use uh, slope just because 10 is way out there. It actually, it wouldn't be too bad. Uh, negative 10, and then you would go up 2 over 1 would be fine. Um, I'll just do a little table. But the slope would also be fine. So I'm going to put a 0. If I put 0 for x, I'm going to get minus 10. And I need one more point. So if I put a 1, 2 times 1 is 2, minus 10 will give me minus 8. All right? So this is f of x, the original function. To do your inverse function, you really don't have to go back and pick points. Switch the x and y's for graphing purposes. So you're going to have negative 10, 0, and negative 8, 1. And then we're ready to graph. All right, so we're going to do the line tool. Um, 0, negative 10, so don't go over, go down 10. And we're going to do 1, negative 8. All right, then we'll do the line tool again. And we'll do uh, negative 10, 0. And then we're going to do negative 8, 1. All right, and then they ask you to put on the identity line. So it goes through 0, 0. And all your coordinates are the same. So you can use 1, 1, 2, 2. Doesn't matter. And these should reflect across. Ah. Oh, I forgot to enter this. We just looked at it. Okay, so it's okay. All right. Um, I'm debating here which is more valuable to you. I'm going to, um, I'll go back to 33 at the end. And if you have to go off, it's okay. I'm going to do the circle. Um, and you're not going to have a midpoint or a distance question. So uh, you can not use up the brain power of memorizing those formulas. But you need to know circle. So we'll go to question 38. So if x squared plus y squared plus 14x plus 14y plus 94 equals 0. So what you're going to have to do to get your standard form is you're going to have to complete the square twice for this circle. So you're going to move the 94 to the other side. And you're going to gather up your like terms. So I'm going to do x squared plus my x terms, and I have to add a number. And I'll figure that out. y squared plus 14y, and I'm going to have to add a number. And now this is negative 94. So remember, when you figure this out, it's half of your coefficient of the x term. So I'm probably OK right here. So half of 14 is 7. 7 squared is 49. So we're going to add a 49. And we also have to add it over here. Right? And then we're going to find it here. And if I didn't mess up copying that, those are the same. Okay, so it's going to actually give me also a 49. Because it was also 14. That doesn't happen that often. All right. So this is going to be x plus 7 
times x plus 7 when you factor it, which is x plus 7 squared. This will be y plus 7 squared. And over here, I'm going to combine this. So I have 49 plus 49 minus 94. So it's 4. This is the first answer. So this is your standard form. So we're good there. Uh, you want to pick off your center. Remember that um, your standard form has x minus h. So since this is plus, it will be a negative 7. And this will be a negative 7 since it's plus. Your radius is the square root over here. So radius is 2. So center of the circle, negative 7, negative 7, radius of 2. All right, they want us to graph the circle. So pick your circle tool. Your center, so negative 7, negative 7. Right, and then we're going to count from the center two units in any direction and make a point. And there is our circle, and that's easy to pick your domain and range from if you have the picture. If not, you would do it algebraically from the center. All right, and domain goes with the x's and range goes with the y's. So your domain is left, so this is negative 9 to... Um, negative 5 with brackets because you're touching those points. Your range is negative 9 to negative 5. But I was looking up and down. This one is just a little weird because it gave us the same points. Right, and um, just real quick how to do this algebraically, if you didn't have to draw the picture, you would um, start with your center, and for the left of your domain, you would subtract 2, so you would do negative 7 minus 2, which is your negative 9, and then you would do negative 7 plus 2. Because you're working only with the x for domain. And then range, you would do the same. You would have negative 5, and you would go 2 units down. So that would be negative 7. And then you would do negative 5 plus 2 to get this piece up here. It's going higher. And then that would give you, I'm sorry, not negative 5. Negative 7 plus 2 would give you the negative 5. So you could do both, and um, it's going to mark me all wrong if I, whoops, oh, let me show. Okay. All right, so I have used your time. If you have a question, hang out and ask, and I'm going to stick around and do that last question so it will be on your video, and you're welcome to stay if you want to, but you don't have to. Um, so your test will be before our next class on Tuesday. I don't remember the due date, but I sent it to you on announcements. You have three things you can do for review uh, in your chapter folder in Blackboard. Um, so it's chapter three folder, the review. It's problems that would be on paper, but there's videos to match. Uh, there is this practice test that we just did a bunch of problems from. And then there's also the ASC review probably have to watch the recording at this point, but that's fine to do. Um, you will go through Honor Lock. You know, you have to use Google Chrome. You have to um, go through Pioneer Portal. Make sure you write your work. Do it in a vertical format, and if you'll scan it and send it as one file. When I'm looking for a problem and I have to look through seven files to find it, you know, maybe I'll look for it and maybe I won't. So, it's a lot better if you give it to me in one file as a PDF. Um, 
any questions from you guys? You can just ask or you can put it in chat. All right, I'm not seeing any questions, so I'm going to go back. I know I'm over, but um, it is okay to go if you need to. I'm going to go back and do that one question that I skipped. Um, it's a little advanced question, but it is an inverse where you have a restricted domain. So question 32. I hope you guys have a great day, and I hope this is better than the collaborate, at least for sound. So. So this is going to be a piece of a fun of a parabola because a parabola itself is not one to one. Well, maybe she did a different color, so we'll do blue. All right, so we have f of x equals x plus three squared plus three, and they are telling us. That if we do this whole thing, it would be this whole parabola. And it is not one-to-one -one by your horizontal line test. But if they restrict the domain to this, um, and it's probably easier to work with um, writing it as x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Because algebraically, we're going to find the inverse. Um, and if they didn't ask us for this inverse, I mean, if they just asked graph, you could find these points. So here's a point and pick another one that hits at a corner uh, or plug something in. And then you could flip the points, X and Y's. But since they ask us for an algebraic answer, you have to do it algebraically. So we'll say Y equals X plus 3 squared plus 3. Now you're going to change x's and y's, and you also have to change it in this piece. So this will become x, y plus 3, squared plus 3, and y will be greater than or equal to negative 3. Then we're going to isolate the y. So first you would take off this piece. So we're going to do x minus 3 equals y plus 3 squared. So I subtracted from both sides. Now you're going to have to do the square root to get this off. Remember, when you do square root, you're going to get plus and minus on this side. And over here, it's just going to take your radical or take your exponent off. So the radical will cancel. But the plus and minus is the part that's not okay here. What you're going to go back to, and let's go ahead and move this three. So this is going to, we're going to take three away, put it in front of your plus and minus. So we're going to have negative three plus or minus square root of x minus three. So we're not going to be able to have both of those. We look back here, and this says that y, and this is y equals, this is equal to y, right? Has to be greater than or equal to negative three. So if we have negative 3, if we add something, and this would be positive, if we add something, we're fine. It's going to get bigger. Right? But if we try to subtract a positive, it's going to make it smaller. So because of this restriction, we're not going to take the minus. We're going to throw it away. So we're going to choose for our inverse just this part. So our f inverse of x is going to be negative 3 plus square root of x minus 3. And we'll just look at the answer. It put the minus 3 after. You're always safer to put it in front because then it doesn't end up under the radical. I would always put it in front instead of here. They're going to give you credit either way. All right. So that's the first piece. And now they want us to... Um, graph f inverse and the identity function. So it's going to look like this, and 
this point you're going to have to have for the end point, right? So it's inverse. Um, this one you can see the coordinates on, and then we can get a, just a point out of here. Uh, it is probably a, um, all right, let's see what we have. We have negative 3, 3, if I'm not mistaken. So negative 3, 3, and this is from the first one. That's the end on this function, and so we need to switch those and have 3, negative 3 will be one of our points. And so that'll be our end, and then we just need one other point. Um, you can plug into your inverse function. Um, I would probably pick a 4 because 4 minus 3 is 1, and that makes you a nice square root. Right, so if we pick 4 for x, plugging into the inverse function this time, 4 minus 1, 4 minus 3 is 1, square root of 1 is 1. Negative 3 plus 1 gives us negative 2. And I hope I did all that math right. So, let's put those on. And what we want is the square root tool. We don't want the whole parabola tool because we've restricted it. So we want 3, negative 3. That's the end. And we want 4, negative 2. All right, and then they want us to put the line y equals x. And it does flip across. All right, and we can go ahead and get the domain and the range. Um, and remember, these are going to switch. So your domain of f is here. This is your domain of f. And this will become the range of f inverse. So domain of f, negative 3 to infinity negative 3 to infinity. That will be the range of f inverse, negative 3 to infinity. All right, so we didn't have to work much there. Um, the range of f, and we could go back, this original one is f, right? Its range is, the lowest point is 3, and it's touching. So it is going to be 3 to infinity. So this is on the original. So the range of f, 3 to infinity, I took it from the graph. Good. And then for my domain of f inverse, it will be the range of f. Right? I could also pick it from the graph. It's how much you go across. So your leftmost point is 3 to infinity. But you don't have to look back. All right. So that gives you that problem that's a little 